This week, I started a new program. I call it YouTube Live. Well, <laughs> the reason for that title is because, well, just like my uh, YouTube channel, uh, I just kind of go with the flow, uh, come up with ideas, and then, you know, present it to you. So what I did was uh, I have a Thursday class and a Saturday class. Well, it started out, uh, to me, it was pretty good. We have two people that joined the Thursday class. Uh, two gentlemen that was interested mainly in bonsai. And then for the Saturday class, I have three ladies, and they were more interested in the Japanese garden cultural type uh, uh, program. So that's what I'm going to do next month. I'm going to base on what they want. And today what I thought I'd do is give you an excerpt of what I went through the first session. Okay, what I have on the board is bonsai on this side and sui seki on the other. And I was explained to them that these two art forms are very serious in Japan. This is bonsai, uh, a, a tree. Sui seki is a stone. Uh, when you write the kanji for it, it's just water and rock. But anyway, uh, so this is a very serious art form, uh, trees. Uh, this is a very serious art form, uh, the perfect rock. But what I wanted to do was cover what happens when you combine these two. So between these two, we will have the Japanese gardens, right? And it could be full-size Japanese garden or in miniature. And then uh, taking something that is closer to Suiseki, the Zen garden. That means that just the stone and sand. And then I think I talked to you in the past about the Zen garden box. Because if you put it in the garden, you have problems with leaves and things like that. And your cat or your whole neighborhood of cats. Okay, now one of my teachers, Mr. Kawamoto, he introduced me to Saike. Saike, he calls it living landscape. So we're taking uh, the garden and put it in a smaller format. If you study the history, there was one called a Hako Niwa. Hako is Japanese for box, Niwa is a garden. And I think that was way in the past with bon niwa. Bon is like the bonsai here, the container, and niwa is a garden. So bon niwa and hako niwa could be similar. And then because I learned so much from Mr. Kawamoto and the Saike, I came up with the bon niwa. Now, Mr. Kawamoto was doing more natural landscape. And what I wanted to do was to uh, introduce Japanese garden in a tray. So what that means is that, you know, the uh, lanterns and water basins and things like that, uh, I wanted to introduce. Well, I, you got to remember that my background is I'm a landscape architect major specializing in Japanese garden design. So it was only natural for me to uh, get on with this concept. What I didn't want to do was to water down what Mr. Kawamoto was doing. Okay, now if you study the Japanese arts and uh, culture, a lot of it came from China. And in China, they call it penjing, and I have this feeling that it's probably the same character pronounced differently. Well, in China, they call it single tree or landscape penjing. And then different parts of China would be pronouncing this differently. So I'll just stay with what I know is the Japanese part. Uh, looking for me, these were all new students. So um, unlike some of you have been following me, then you've already seen this a number of times. So I went with a single rock, kind of burying it to its widest point. So that it 
it becomes uh, very natural and infinitely large, right? Because now you don't know how big this is versus this, you know how big it is. And should you be working on a Japanese garden and there happened to be a pathway this way, then you could take the same stone and do like that. Okay, and then take the same stone and if you bury it this way, and then create the mound on behind it, that's start of a Japanese garden. We put uh, the new Aki tree here, right here, and then you could start to visualize, right? So that was how I got started. Then we talked about all the concept of the Zen garden, how each one of these movement uh, represented things the straight line being the calmness and then well in Japan the white cap hits the outcropping like so so anyway that's another one of the subjects that we talked about uh, we talked a little bit about travel and how we well my wife and I went to Bodega Bay and this is what I saw in one of the spots that we were looking at the ocean and guess what most everybody recognized this rock so that was kind of uh, interesting I think people are kind of looking at the same kind of thing but anyway this is uh, uh, right slightly north of Bodega Bay uh, if you get off at the uh, viewing points you may see this one if you get off at the wrong one, you only see this side, so you won't see the arch. Okay, the two classes being distinctly different, uh, I did not get in with this because people were more interested in the bonsai. Well, this is an example of a suiseki. Uh, it's a modestly nice one, but what I wanted to do was explain how it could be so much better. I think my Saturday class was fascinated with this. So I said, now, if you find a rock that has something like this, that's natural. What I did was I used chalk. And you could see that there's a potential waterfall there, right? So if that is natural, then it will greatly increase the quality of the bones, uh, the suiseki, and it will be much more expensive. Probably impossible to find, but if this stone naturally had a white top like that, where it might look like a snow cap, it will greatly enhance the value of this rock. Since we're just imagining things, how about some uh, mountain lakes? Well, anyway, I got the ladies all excited. I think they're going to be out looking for uh, potential rocks. Uh, and we'll see what happens during the next session. I kind of like this format where I don't have to make a lot of decisions. I have a lot of the uh, answers already in my head and a lot of examples. So having my student body tell me what they want to know next is a cinch. Anyway, hopefully uh, some of you that live close enough can come join. Uh, it's on a Thursday, uh, 10 to noon, and on Saturday, 10 to noon. Uh, typically, the Saturday will be on the third uh, Saturday of the month. Uh, anyway, uh, hopefully this will develop into something a little more uh, lively, and depending on... Uh, who wants to be on video, uh, we might start shooting some uh, in-class videos. Uh, I think I said that before, but it is quite difficult because uh, I'm running this whole show. Anyway, um, hopefully you enjoy this little update of what I'm doing with my live classes. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and hopefully uh, we'll keep this going and keep it a very interesting. 
See you again real soon in another chapter.